This is not the intro I had planned for this video. I had many plans for this video that have gone completely awry. Have you ever worked on a project where so many things just continually went wrong that you started to think this project must be cursed? Not like a horrible curse, maybe a curse where instead of the enchantress saying, we shall prick her finger and die. And she utters, and every time she begins to make progress, some frustrating inconvenience shall befall her. Something like that. Since beginning this project, I have been ill four times, have thrown my back out, and twice, twice, after almost finishing the editing process, all of my clips, sounds, music, everything just went missing. Twice. And I had to start over. You'd think I'd finally give it up, start something else, but no. I am stubborn. So what is this project? Well, if you clicked on the video, you probably already read the title and already know what it's about, what I'm going to tell you anyway. I am making the dress, the dress that has been on my mind since I laid eyes on it. I don't know how many years ago, but I've wanted to make it for a long time and I'm finally going to do it. Actually, I already did it, sorry, spoilers. I just didn't want to film the intro until I had actually finished it because I didn't know if I would be able to, but here I am finally making the intro. So come with me on a journey, if you will, a journey to the past. The journey began at the thrift store. Shocking, I know. I explored the usual spots, the fabric bins, the linens, sheets, curtains, tablecloths, and such, and I purchased plenty of paraphernalia that was not meant for this project. I also investigated the clothing racks, and though I did go a little extreme that day, I did not buy absolutely everything that caught my eye. However, I was able to locate almost everything I needed, some brown pieces and some gray pieces. You may be wondering, gray? Brown? I thought this was Anastasia. Yes, indeed, but I am also making Anya's outfit and combining them. I am making a transformation dress. Let's look at the supplies. Here's what we have for the project. This is for the Anya tunic. This is actually for the sleeves. I already had that, so that was lovely. I've had this for a while. This is for the over fabric overlay. And then I'm going to use this as lining. This is 100% cotton. I also found it at the thrift store. And I'm a little sad about it because I had planned on using it for a different project. But this is all I have that will work. I'm afraid it might make it a little bit bulky. I'm really hoping it doesn't. But this is what I have and I am not going to go to the fabric store and purchase exactly what I was hoping for, which was actual lining fabric or satin, because that's way too expensive. And I was really hoping to spend that money on, you know, frivolous things like groceries. Why couldn't I have chosen like a food-based hobby? That would have been smarter. Because then I could buy the materials, the ingredients, and then make the thing, take the picture, take the video, and then eat the thing. So the materials would count as my groceries. Instead, I had to pick sewing. I did not think this through. I decided to begin with the most daunting part of the project, the hat. The test hat was, but I soldiered on. Get it? Never mind. I had a lot of trouble with it, spent way too much time on it. Yes, I could probably have purchased a similar enough hat, but I stubbornly set myself to conquer. I finally finished it and am less than pleased with how it turned out, but it motivates me to improve. Okay, I will seriously cool it now with the harp sounds. Then it was time to drape the bodice. After finalizing the pattern, I set to work cutting out all of the bodice pieces, the cotton fabric, the lining fabric, the chiffon, and the interfacing. So many pieces. I love the way chiffon looks, but working with it is so very frustrating. It shifts around so much. It's just frustrating. I'll stop complaining. I chose to use it. I know. 
After that, I laid the chiffon on top of the cotton fabric and set to pinning. Then I hand basted everything into place before using the sewing machine. A time consuming process, but worth it because then I didn't have to contend with pins. By the way, the amount of support I had during this project was so touching. Persephone was constantly there to support me. So sweet. After that, it was sewing up darts, side seams, and the neckline. Now this bodice has a square neckline, which means corners. And let us not forget the number one rule when sewing around a corner and also when moving furniture. <laughs> but alas, for some reason the bodice just wasn't fitting right. I determined that I once again made the mistake of doing darts when darts really don't ever seem to fit me well. Princess seams always seem to fit me better, and Anastasia is a princess, so I should have known. So I changed them to princess seams, but I left the side dart in because I did not want to start completely over. It may not look great, but it works. has arrived. I bought a wig. Uh. Okay, obviously it's not on correctly. I think it's gonna work. This is where I left off. Uh, the sleeves are all sewn in. Bodice is ready for the skirt to be sewn on and a zipper to be put in. So now it is time to cut out the skirt. I really wanted to cut out the circle skirt in one or two pieces, but the fabrics were not wide enough. So I just had to make it work by cutting it into sections and then sewing the pieces together. It wasn't ideal, but I was working with what I had. It's actually kind of cool to be offered such a challenge. I have at times been able to purchase just the right amount of fabric brand new, but for the last several years, it's mostly been what I was able to find. And figuring out how to make it work with less yardage, damaged fabrics, and how to work with various sources of fabric has really helped with my perfectionism and has helped me to boost my resourcefulness and creativity. And I think that's kind of cool. For the skirt side seams, I opted for French seams to make things nice and tidy. If you're wondering how to make a French seam, you put the fabric pieces wrong sides together, so, and then trim fairly close to the seam, but not too close that you cut the thread, press it, flip it over to have right sides together, press it again, and then sew right along that edge that you cut, encasing it in a nice little envelope or tunnel or cage. I'm not good with metaphors. Anyway, that's basically how you sew a French seam. I'm now ready to sew up the center back seam. I'm going to do a flat felled seam. What is a flat felled seam, you may ask? Or maybe you didn't, maybe you don't care. Either way, I'm going to show you. And if you don't care, you can skip past this part. But if you're interested, keep watching. Here we go. To make a flat felled seam, place the pieces of fabric right sides together and sew. But if, as in this case, you are sewing a center back seam and you are inserting a zipper into the lining, you should only baste the top portion. I always mark my fabric where I want to stop basting with a red pin, so I don't forget, because I usually do forget. Once I reach that red pin, I change the stitch length to be a regular stitch instead of a basting stitch, and then backstitch to knot the thread. How many times did I say stitch in that sentence? This next step you see is totally optional. I'm only doing it because I used the selvage when I was cutting out the fabric because it was just easier that way, so I'm just going to cut off this fuzzy edge to make it easier for me to make a flat felled seam. Again, this step is optional. Then press the seam open flat, and then just take one side and flip it underneath, just fold it right in half, and press all the way up, even the part that you basted, and do the same thing on the other side. Then stitch both sides down with a regular stitch. That's a flat felled seam. But before I could say I was finished with my center back flat felt seam, I had to seam rip the section that I basted because that's for the zipper to go through, dear. Yes, I do realize that is another Disney reference and Anastasia is not a Disney princess. Then I attached both the skirts to the bodice.
hand basting zippers in instead of machine basting seems pretty tedious, but it actually saves me a lot of time and a lot of wear and tear on the fabric because I don't have to pull out little stitches if, when I make a mistake, and I can try it on. It's essentially like pinning it on, but with thread instead of sharp little pointy objects. And then it was time to trim the skirt, and let me tell you my measurements were just so perfect I barely had to cut anything off at all. Okay, but just don't look over there. Wait, wait. And then it was time to hem the skirt, all 312 inches of it, twice. Yeah, I have an apology to make. While I really and truly wanted to share a great grand reveal with you, this video is getting way too long, so I'm gonna have to make a part two. See you next time. Uh -huh.